Hello everyone, my name is Raymond, and welcome back to the next installment of the Project Feline Devlog series, a series about designing and developing my dream game from start to end. When I started Project Feline, I started with reimagining a character I had designed from when I was a kid, and thinking up of a cool game that the character could fit into. And in the last episode, I released my prototype on the itch.io store. Huge thank you to all who downloaded and tested the game, and it seems a lot of you really enjoyed it, so much so that a few of you even made Let's Play videos on it. And I was super thrilled that you guys had a fun time with it, and I really appreciate all the support. However... Oh, it's a checkpoint! I was gonna ask if those are stand-ins for- oh my god. <laughs> oh, buddy. I think that now that most of the heavy back-end programming and gameplay is out of the way, it's high time that I come back to the core focus of the game the character. And that's what we're going to be covering in this episode of Project Feline. I'll be showing you the beginning of my pipeline for creating a fully 3D game ready character from scratch. So without further ado, let's get into it. I wanted the final character to look a lot different to this. I was thinking something cool like in the Japanese manga anime style, the likes of which seen in games like Jet Set Radio, Okami, and Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3! So I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could emulate that traditional Japanese manga anime style into the core character design for this project. So to do this, I always start with a model sheet or a projection sheet. And this is a 2D image that will have the character drawn from all angles. This is then used as a reference for when I commence the 3D model. In my model sheet, I drew the character from the front, back, and the sides in an A pose. An A pose is a commonly desirable pose to model characters in for 3D. The T pose is another common pose, however my preference lies with the A pose as it leaves all of the character's limbs in a more relaxed state, especially the shoulders and under the arms. I find this particularly helpful when rigging. I took things an extra mile with this sheet and made the character using different layers in a modular way. I first drew and coloured the entire character on its own without any armour or accessories to get an idea of the proportions of the body and make sure that they looked accurate in 2D before translating it to 3D. Afterwards I then drew and coloured the armour pieces on top of the base drawing. Now because I've done it this way, if I later want to design a different suit or a skin or an outfit, all I need to do is copy the base character drawing and draw a new outfit over the top. Here is the final result after about a day of work. I exported two character sheets from this document, one to use for the base character mesh without any armour, and the other with the armour included for when I get around to modelling the suit. Once I've drawn up those model sheets, I then import them into my modeling software. In this case, I'm using a free program called Blender, which I've had an excellent experience with. And once those sheets are imported and positioned, I then commence the 3D model. So when I began modeling this character, I wanted to take the same modular approach I had taken with the model sheet. So I focused on just creating a base humanoid mesh and then building the character from that. Doing it this way would allow for a lot of different things. One of those things being that I could reuse this base humanoid mesh for other humanoid characters later in the game. And all it would take to make a new character would just be taking this base mesh and adjusting up the proportions and adding some different details. This would also allow for the possibility to create unlockable skins for the character in the game. This model is by far the most important as it's the model for the playable character of a third person game. I was rather intimidated to make this model, which was probably why I put it off for so long, and to make this I knew I'd need to drastically raise the bar for myself to produce a model more detailed and more stylish than anything I had made before. Luckily I had lots of practice recently working with Matthew Palahay for his Game of Month series, where I designed and modelled two characters and animated a pair of first person arms. So I think those two opportunities were great practice for me to get back into character modelling as I spend a lot of my time nowadays on the programming end. But nonetheless, I needed to learn some new skills about 3D modelling if I wanted to truly outdo myself. While making this model, I tried to incorporate some techniques I learned through a 40 part tutorial series by Daniel Kruter on modelling a character in the style of Japanese anime. 
The modeling process was considerably slower than my previous works as I tried to learn and incorporate his techniques in the tutorial to my own model. This pipeline begins with modeling different parts of the body separately, with as little polygons as possible, juxtaposed to my normal method of trying to model the whole body at once. Once I had modeled most of the essential limbs and pieces, I then began to refine and add detail to each individual piece, one at a time. This would often involve refining the base shape of the geometry, then using a subdivide modifier to add more detail and smoothness. For the torso piece, I made use of Blender's sculpting features to further pronounce the contours of the body and add some finer detail. I rather liked this method as it alleviated the stress of having to focus on the entire character at once and instead just breaking the work down into small, manageable chunks. After fleshing out the details of the body, the arms, the legs, the head, the hands and feet, I then worked to stitch all of the pieces together in a single piece of geometry. This was rather challenging as not all of the pieces had the same poly count, so I had to be very careful where I could make accommodations to add or remove polygons without accidentally creating things like n-gons or triangles in the mesh. Luckily, in the end, I managed to stitch all of the parts together seamlessly. And here is the result, after about a week of learning and modeling. My main focus was just to get the humanoid base model in the style of Japanese anime. The next part of this process I will be focusing on the hair, the face detail, and then modeling the feline suit. After that I will then commence the texturing phase, so be sure to stick around for the next video to see all of that take place. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to join me next week to see the modeling process of the armor, as well as the texturing process for the entire character. As always, I'd like to hand the conversation over to you guys, so if you have any thoughts, comments, or feedback about how the character is going so far, or any ideas you might have about how she should look in the end, be sure to let me know in the comments of this video, or consider joining the community discord. And if you'd be interested to try the game that this model will be in, I've got the itch.io store page linked down in the description, where you can try out the prototype completely free of charge. So if you have an extra 5 minutes to spare, and if you have an itch for third person wall running action, then be sure to try it out. I'm always welcome to any comments or feedback, so if you have any, feel welcome to leave it in the description of this video or on the community page on itch. And as always, huge shout out to this month's Patreon supporters. If you'd like to consider supporting the production of these videos, I will link my Patreon down in the description if you have an extra dollar. I'd like to thank the artists behind this month's wonderful Project Feline fan art submissions. If you'd like to have your fan art featured in these videos, consider joining the community discord linked in the description. Not only can you submit fan art, but you can also participate in discussions about game design, programming, art and music. I'll also be trying to do regular Q&A videos, so if you do have a question you'd like to see me answer in a video style, you can leave it in the Q&A chat in the Discord server. As always, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next installment where I continue the development of this character. Be sure to follow my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for more frequent updates in between uploads. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.